Today we're going to create an amazing bass stem for worship, so stay on this video. For this video, I'm going to use this amazing bass that I've had for a while. This is a Jaguar Squire Vintage Modify. This bass is pretty cool looking. I love the inlays. It's like a Jaguar type uh, PJ bass. I really like the way it sounds. So this bass is slightly modified. It has five string strings on it. So it's E, A, B, um, no, it's uh, B, E, A, and D. So we're not using the last string on the bass. And it's modified to take that bass. Um, the height, it's a little bit higher on the B string, but everything else sounds amazing. Just, I like that extra low end. So let's get started and let's create this patch. So let's do that. Let's create a new patch. Let's just go here. There's nothing on it, okay? So I put a little drum beat in the background just so I can get timing and get a feeling for it, okay? So I'm gonna go completely dry. It's not gonna sound the same, but that way I can build the tone. Um, let's go here, record. Uh, I'm gonna loop it and then I'm gonna use that to start recording. Okay, so let me put this away. Ugh. So, first thing, what I'm gonna do, um, let me put this here. So, we're gonna loop that. Loop. Okay, so that's good. Make sure you have a good pair of headphones or monitors or in-ears so you can hear those little changes that I'm gonna be using just to shape the tone, okay? So let's open up Helix Native. So what I have here is just a plain patch. There's nothing to it, okay? So let's start with creating my patches. Now, um, what I'm gonna do is here, um, I'm gonna create host because my signal is gonna come through there. And then from here, I'm gonna pan this all the way to the left and this one I'm going to pan all the way to the right. That's the first two things that I do. Pan right, pan left. Okay. Now on uh, the first one, I'm going to start always with my cabinet. So let's go to Cav and let's use the SBT AB and then let's do the same with the next one. Cab. Let's go to the 10 and there they are. Okay. So then my next major uh effect is always dynamics i go to legacy and i use a tube comp and i'm gonna go here copy and paste okay so on the first one i'm gonna use an amp head so i'm gonna go to amps go to guitar bass and you can switch here so you can see the amp heads you want to use let's use and the last one i use the uh, sbt pro and i like it just because it has this low end ultra low and i always turn it on and then I always turn on the EQ so I can kind of shape it on this side. But you can just turn on a little bit of more bass, which I put it around 63. My treble, I lower it. And my meet frequency, I leave it there. Channel, master. Okay, that sounds pretty good. And then for this side, I'm going to use a DI. So let's go here and let's go to distortion. And we're going to go all the way to the end. And I can use the... Um, zero amp, which is the Tech 21 or the Obsidian. This is, uh, I think the dark glass. Um, uh, this one's really heavy. I really like that one, but for this one, uh, let's just use the Obsidian just to make it a little bit different. And then another thing I do in this patch, I'll put a little bit of a boost. So I go to distortion and the range master. Let's just use, let's use something more clean. Let's put, uh, Timmy. I could put a uh, scrambler, but for this tone, I'm just going to use a Timmy just to give me a little bit more push. Uh, bass cut. No, I don't want you to cut, so I'm going to lower 
Well, yeah, we can cut a little bit of the base because this side is going to be a little bit more bassy. So let's go in here, and I like for the low end, I like this 67 condenser, and I'm going to put it really close, and I'm going to put it right in the middle of the cone, which this is the cap, and this is the cone, so I put it right in the middle. And for this one, we're going to use something a little bit brighter. Let's go with, a, uh, let's go for 421, and let's just go around the cap, okay? And let's just leave it there for now, and let's hear what that sounds like. All right, so it's a little bit much. Let's lower my output. That sounds actually really cool already. Okay, so let's tweak a little bit of the tone. Now, for modulation, I like to throw something a, a little bit different in there just so it can give me like a, a separation of the two tones. Let's go 70s chorus and let's put the mix down. Uh, the headroom, I usually put it all the way. So that's the bass sound. Let me see if I can tweak a little bit more. Okay, ultra low, and it's going to EQ. Just so I get more punch. This doesn't affect much the low end, but this one does. Just that ultra low, okay? That's could be a little bit much. Okay. I kind of like it there. I like the angle, 45 degrees or off axis. All right, that's pretty good right there. So now I'm gonna tweak the other side. Let's go zero and let's go 100%. Just hold control, click on it. All right, let's do it. So it's got grit. So let's cut the low end, low cut. Around 120 hertz. Okay, so compression is it compressing hard no let's lower the compression compress me a little bit more let's see what that is um putting the team in the beginning just gives me that extra grid that i might need later so let's do it again all right so let me take it off and let me use the natural grid from here let me turn on the chorus And let's use my level a little bit higher, a little more drive. Um, hit frequency treble, a little bit higher treble. Okay, that's not bad. And now if I turn on if I turn on the teamy now, okay, so let's tweak the chorus now. All right, that sounds pretty good. I'm gonna tweak the bass sound a little bit more. Let's go on the other side. Let's call control, just tap it. Ooh, that's nice low end. So I wanted to compress, oh, it's compressing pretty much. Let's go at 60. Let's put the volume, the compression a little bit harder on the bass so it's snappier. So I compress the low end a little bit more so it's snappier and it's, it gets me this pulsing 
uh, tone, more consistent. And then the left side, I should leave it a little bit more loose, but I do like to over compress them a little bit just so it's more of a consistent sound throughout all my playing. Even the distortion, I just wanted to distort, but I don't like when my low end is distorted, if that makes sense to you. So when I send this signal to the front of house, I go completely hard right, completely hard left. But in my in-ears, I blend the two about 75% right, 70% left. That's what I'm going to do right now so you can hear what it sounds like. Uh, just to give you an idea of what it was sound in my in-ears. But I do like that low end to be a, bit, a little bit more permanent, you know, like a little subby. And that gritty side, I liked it to be a little bit more gritty. So uh, let's hear it from the beginning. And let's go zero. And let me go here to zero. I lower the left, the right a little bit. That's with no low end. That's when I, it's kind of like my clean. So let's me grab it and go 75%. Let's go 75 and let's go right 75. That makes a difference in my in-ears. All right, now I'm gonna I turn off all the effects and I'm gonna start turning from the cab, from let's say from the right to the left to show you the impact that this sounds make on your tone. All right, so make sure I have on pan 75% left, 75% right, because that's usually what I'm gonna do in my in ears. So let's get started. All right, so that sounds pretty cool. I actually like this patch better than the one I built before. Um, so I use the Obsidian 7000. I never used this uh, pedal like this before. This is the first time I actually try it on flat. You should have like a boosted because it sounds insane. Uh, but this is as much as distortion I will ever add on a worship set. You know, if I'm playing something a little bit more aggressive, like this is Amazing Grace, or when we go into the bridge of Rattle, this is where I would throw in uh, my my distortion. And I like this clean, uh, the Timmy. It's just like a clean, nice overdriven. I really like how it cuts uh, on the bass. You can use the Scrambler. Do you have uh, the Ampex Scrambler? Or if you use the uh, Clown, Clown Thorn Drive, uh, this is insane. This is for like, metal uh players and i think that'd be great but for worship i don't think you ever need that one but you can use it very clean i'm pretty sure you can use uh a little bit of that mild grit for me this is kind of where i will go about i would recommend you to try this out and use your favorite cab your favorite amp head and your favorite di it's kind of like an amp with a di together and this brings up the sound a little bit better you can use dual amp if you want one amp completely clean and one amp a little bit more dirty. So that would be very, very interesting that I would love to hear what ideas you come up with. Thank you, friends, for staying until the end of this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Please let me hear your comments, your suggestions. I would love to see your video of how you create your own patch. I think that'd be great. And, you know, don't forget to hit the bell on the YouTube 
icon of the bell so YouTube lets you know every time we come up with a new video. If you would like to help out the channel, I would really appreciate it if you can visit our online store where we have a lot of freebies. And if you want to spread a coffee with me, there is a link for this patch. It's, it's only going to cost you less than a Starbucks and you can play with it. That will help out a lot our channel so we can keep the lights on and keep bringing you more tutorials. Thank you, friends, for staying with Music Gear for Worship. I will see you in another video. Have a blessed day. Ciao. It's a little bit modified, so I'm using uh, five string strings on this bass. It's a four string, but I'm using uh, B, E, A, and D. I don't have the G string. That didn't sound right. I don't have the string. I don't have a G string. Let's do that again. <laughs> it's a G string. Uh, coming off guard. Let me think about that one. Um, okay, so... In today's G string, <laughs> oh G string, um.